Hey friends, it's Christy here for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Terrific Day stamp set and the Terrific Day add-on. So I've stamped the images I'll be using in jet black ink on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with this adorable lady hedgehog and I'm coloring her using E50, E51, and E53 laying in a shadow down her back with that E53 also on the bottom of her body and the bottoms of her legs and arms and then blending out with the E51 and then I'll come in and fill in the rest of her with the E50. I'm also going to use these shades to color in the bottom of that adorable little acorn teapot. So I'm being a bit more heavy handed with the E53 this time because I want it to be a little bit darker. Also putting in a shadow up under the lid where there would be one and then blending out with the E51 and then the E50. I'm also going to do the white parts of my fox using just those lightest two shades. So this time I'm starting with the E51 to add a bit of shading and then I'll blend that out with the E50 and let that fade into the white cardstock as the highlight. And I'm also going to do that for the belly of my little mouse. Just doing the same exact thing. And I'm also going to do the top of the little wood stump table. So I'm putting that E53 out on the outer edges and then blending toward the center using the E51. And then I'll bring in the E50 for the highlight in the middle. Next, I'm going to switch up to a darker brown combo using E55, E57, and E59. And I'm going to do the little spikes down Mrs. Hedgehog's back, starting with that E59 and just doing little dash marks. And then I'll come in with the E57 and kind of go in between those. Some of them are going to overlap and that's totally fine. It's just going to make it look nice and full. And then I'll come in with the E55 as my lightest shade and kind of fill in the rest of those little white spots. If some of them show that's fine, it's just going to add another dimension in there, but pretty much filling that in. And then I'm going to use those same shades to color in the bottom of my stump starting with that E59 on the outer edges, just laying in some shadows, also on the bottom edges of that stump, any place where the wood is kind of sticking out or bumped out a bit. Also putting a little shadow next to the banners that are hanging around it, which are so super cute. So just continuing around that, and then I'm going to switch to my E57, and start to blend that out. Now I will say that I didn't get the smoothest blend on here, especially when I started adding in the E55. And that's just because my markers are running a bit dry and in desperate need of a maintenance day. They need some refills and a few of them, especially the E57 and E55, need some new nibs. And so um, the markers are a little bit sticky and so it makes it a little bit tricky to get a nice blend. But I'm going to do a little trick to help cover that up in just a minute. So I'm just continuing to fill that in with the E55 for now. I'm going to first let that dry back a bit and in the meantime use E49 to add in a few little extra uh, dash marks to the hedgehog to just increase that depth. And then I'm going to come over to this stump and start to add in some wood grain texture. And I'm sorry that my hand is covering up most of that, but I'm just doing little lines and squiggles and sometimes little curvy bits to kind of um, cover that up and also just create the look of some wood. I'm also going to outline the little hand drawn lines on the top of the acorn teapot and then I'll fill in the rest of that using the E57. For Mr. Fox, I'm going to use my favorite combo for foxes, which is YR12, YR14, and YR18. 
because he's sitting facing the left, I'm going to do his shadows down the right hand side. Also put a little shadow up under the hat brim on the back of his tail where that connects to his body. And then I'll start to blend that forward using the YR14. Sometimes I leave the feet to be white, but for today I decided to just keep them orange because there's a lot going on in this little scene anyway with all of these adorable, sweet little details. So I decided to just keep the coloring of the critters a little more basic. So I'm filling in with that YR14 and then bringing in the YR12 and going to add all of my highlighted areas, just making sure to color over the edge of that YR14 so I get a nice smooth blend into that highlight shade and there's no harsh lines left behind. And then I wanted to have that color tied in somewhere else on the card. I like to repeat shades. I think it just gives you like a more cohesive look. So I'm going to do the little bow tie that the mouse is wearing in this combo of oranges as well. And then I decided to do the banner that is wrapped around that stump in rainbow order. So I'm going to do the center stripe of the banner on the left in this orange combo as well. The rest of the mouse I'm going to do gray. I wanted to have each critter be their own unique color. So I decided to do him in the toner grays. So I'm using T0, T1, and T3. So I'm laying in his shadows on the left hand side since he's facing toward the right. So that'll keep his face nice and highlighted. So I use the T3 for that. And then I'm blending out with the T1 and then filling in the rest of him using the T0. And I think that makes him look really nice and cute. And then I'm also going to use the T1 and T0 to do some of these dishes just to give them a little bit of shading so they'll still look like white but just have a you know something that helps them pop off the page a bit. So T1 first and then blending out with the T0 and letting that fade into the white cardstock. And I'm also going to do the little creamer jug as well. I'm going to switch to some darker grays so I can do Mr. Fox's top hat. So I went with T5, T7, and T9. So that's going to be the only thing that is black on the card, but still using those same toner grays is going to tie those values of gray in somewhere else on the card because I've already used them for the mouse and all of the dishes. I did also pull in the T3 for the highlight on the front of that top hat. For the red squirrel, I'm going to use E13, E17, and E18. And she's facing completely forward, so I'm going to do her shadows pretty much equal on both the left and the right. Just slightly heavier on the right hand side because that tail is over there. So that would be casting a little bit of shadow on her face, I figured. So adding that T18 first and then blending out with the T17. And then I jumped down several marker shades to the T13 because I didn't want her face to get too dark. So I'm going to blend out with that shade, just filling in the rest of her there all her belly and the tops of her feet and then also her little fluffy tail. Then I wanted to give my critters some rosy cheeks so I'm using R000, R11, and R20. And I forgot to wait until I'd colored the bird so I'm just going to go ahead and add them in now and I'm going to color her in a light enough shade that it's fine that I did it first. Uh, you'll still be able to see that blush on her cheeks. So I'm doing the R20 first, then the R11, and then the R000. But on the red squirrel, I knew that the R20 wouldn't be dark enough, so I started with the R22, blended that out with the R20, and just left it as that. While I have those markers out, I'm going to do the macarons in R22, and then R20 and R11 for the lightest. And I shaded one of them on the left and one on the right just so I can put them on different places on the scene and still have my highlight in the center. 
and then I'm going to use the lighter three shades to color in the little treats that are on that stacked tray. So I'm using R20 first and blending out with the R11 and then a touch of that R00 and even leaving a little bit of the white cardstock showing for that as well so they can just look really delicate. Then I'm going to switch to R22, R24, and R29. I'm going to do the filling on the slice of cake and the little cherry on top and then I'm also going to do the filling inside the macarons and I'm going to do the other two stripes on that first banner. So I use the R29 first, blend it out with the R24, and then use the R22 for the highlight. And I'll also do the hat band on Mr. Fox's top hat as well, putting the shadow on the right and the highlight on the left to match the hat. Next, I'll bring in some yellows. I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15. And I'm going to do the majority of the next banner with these yellow shades, just leaving the little polka dots. And then I'm also going to do the center of the flower on Mrs. Hedgehog's hat. And I'm going to do the butterfly. I'm just doing the Y15 at the center and then blending out toward the ends of the wings with the lighter shades. My green combo is going to be YG11, YG13, and YG17. I'm going to use the darker two shades to color in the polka dots on that banner, and then all three shades to do Mr. Fox's bow tie. Then rather than blue in my rainbow, I'm going to do aqua next. So I'm using BG10, BG11, and BG13. I'll do the top and bottom of the last banner with these shades, putting the BG13 on the outside, blending toward the center with the BG11, and then the BG10. Also use the BG10 to add a little bit of color to Mrs. Hedgehog's flower so it looks like a daisy. And then I'll use all three shades to color in the bird putting that BG13 on the left since she's facing toward the right and just blending toward that left hand side with the lighter two shades. And I'll do the flower on Mrs. Squirrel's hat with BG13. I went back to YR18 for the bird's beak and then I'm using E000 and E00 for Mrs. Hedgehog's hat. So it can be like a pale straw hat. And I also use that for the cake layers. My last combo is going to be purple and I'm using V12, V15, and V17. So I'm going to do the hat band for Mrs. Hedgehog and then I'm going to do the flower on the bird's head. I'm going to do the final stripe on that last banner. And I will also do Mrs. Squirrel's entire hat in this purple combo. Once I'm done with that, I'll go over the eyes of any of the critters who have their eyes open with a black Sakura jelly roll pen, just to make them nice and bright and shiny again. And then I'll trim all of these images out with their matching dyes. For my background, I'm using a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and the Cloudy Stencil from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to add some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and go right over the edge of that to create a nice cloudy sky for this adorable little tea party scene to take place outdoors. So I'm just blending that color up, adding more pressure as I leave the stencil, and then softer pressure as I go up that panel so it gets a nice fade from dark to light. And then I'll turn my stencil and continue making sure that I get a unique cloud formation each time. So I can turn that stencil to the left or the right. I can also flip it upside down to get some different cloud formations and just continue on down that panel. Once I've filled it up with as many clouds as I want, I'm going to add some splatter details by pressing some ink onto an acrylic block. 
I'll water that down with a little bit of water from a distress sprayer and then I'm going to splatter that all over the background to give it a bit of movement and interest. Then I've got another piece of Bristol that I trimmed down using the grassy border and I'm going to add some mowed lawn distress oxide ink to that but I'm going to kind of press down below that grass line and then swipe up because I don't want those little delicate grass bits to get bent. So I'm just adding that color at the top and then I'm going to switch to some twisted citron and I'll blend that on at the bottom to create a little bit of a variation in shade so it gets a little bit lighter down there. And there wasn't quite enough contrast on there for me, so I just went back to that dauber that had the mowed lawn on there and pounced a bit more of that ink at the very top. And then I'm also going to do some splatter detail on this grass, so I'm pressing that mowed lawn onto that acrylic block and just tapping that off the edge as well, creating some nice small little dots. Then I'm going to set these two panels aside to dry and in the meantime I'm going to work on my sentiment and I wanted to turn this into a birthday card so I'm taking the word birthday from the reveal wheel sentiments and adding that into the rest of the sentiment from the terrific day and I'm stamping that down in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink again. I just used my stamp chamois to clean those off since they have a terrific part was a brand new stamp set. So I wanted to just clean off any residue from the manufacturing process. And then I stamp that down in a line. And then I'm also gonna create an insert for the inside of my card. And I trim that down using the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. I'm gonna stamp in bubblegum ink. And I'm using the It's Time to Party and the other little bunny and the cake from the Terrific Day add-on. Now I'm ready to start assembling. So I'm going to take that insert and glue that to the inside of a sugar plum card base. So I just cut that down to be a standard A2 size card with the top fold. It's four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. And I also use the outside in stitch rectangle stackables for my focal panel. So I just glued the grass to the cloudy backdrop and then I added some foam tape to the back of that panel. So it would be really well supported when I send this in the mail. I peeled off those release papers and then I'm going to center that on the card so I get an even border of that purple cardstock showing on all four edges. And then I can bring in my images. I'm going to start with the little stump where the party is being held since that's going right in the center of my scene. And then before that glue is dry, I'm going to add my squirrel and my mouse because they are going to be tucked behind that as if they're sitting up on stools um, behind that stump. There are some little mushrooms that you could use for stools that are included in this set, but I knew they would be completely hidden behind the stump, so I didn't bother to color those. But I'm going to take Mr. Fox next and add him over on the right hand side, kind of in front of that stump a little bit. And then on the left, we will have Mrs. Hedgehog. And then I can start adding in some of the accessory images. So I'm going to start with this tray of little goodies, since that's the tallest one, and add that kind of between Mrs. Squirrel and Mr. Mouse. And I wanted Mr. Mouse to be holding one of those macarons. So before that is dry, I'm going to just lift that up and tuck one of those into his little paw. And I adjusted that tray over to the right just a little bit so it would be more visible. And then I'm going to take some of these other little images. I've got the uh, acorn teapot. I'm gonna add that over on the left on top of that stump. And Mr. Fox is going to be holding the slice of cake, so I'll just put that in his paws. I have a little teacup that I'm going to add to Mrs. Hedgehog's hands. So everybody kind of has their own little thing, so they all look like they're just having a wonderful birthday celebration here. I added the creamer to the scene, and I'm going to take the other little teacup and add that onto the table. 
and then I have that last little macaron so that is going to go on there as well just kind of breaking up those two white pieces with a little bit of that pink in between then I have the little bird and that's going to go down in front and then the tiny butterfly I'm going to wait until I add my sentiment so I've trimmed that down using one of the everyday sentiment banners and I'm going to glue that down to the center of the card right up there in the sky above our little celebration and then I just needed to decide which side to add the butterfly to but since the bird was a little bit more toward the left I decided to add the butterfly on the right and then I wanted to stamp the little trail for the butterfly so I grabbed some hippo ink and I'm just going to stamp that down right next to the butterfly and then all that was left was to add a bit of sparkle so I'm taking my favorite stardust stickles and adding it to the little sweet treats so I put it on the ones that are on the tray I also I'm going to put it on my butterfly I'm going to put it on the hat band of Mrs. Hedgehog and the bow tie of Mr. Fox and I also decided to add it to the center of the cake and the bow tie on the mouse and then the little um, flowers on the other two the bird and the hedgehog I didn't bother with the squirrels flower because it was behind that tray anyway so there you can see how that looks when I tip it into the light and there's another peek at the inside I had so much fun creating with these adorable brand new products today I hope that you guys enjoyed it too if you did, please leave me a comment down below, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.